the one thing that's really exciting about this is you're basically being rewarded as an active investor while taking a passive stance, which is not really possible in any asset outside of the public equity market. Best ever listeners, before we get into today's episode, I want to mention Trevor McGregor. Trevor is a real estate results coach. I've been paying him and working with him for years now. He actually is responsible for giving me the idea to do a podcast. So it's not only about transactions that he gives advice on how to find more deals, how to make more money, but also how to build a holistic plan around your real estate entrepreneurship endeavors. That's what I love about working with Trevor, that and being held accountable for what I say I'm going to do and actually making sure that I follow through and do it. I feel like I'm a pretty results-oriented, accountable kind of person, but it's always nice to have someone who's there guiding you along the way and giving you strategy as well as psychology tips for how to deal with you know the things that come up as a real estate entrepreneur. Trevor has made a wonderful offer for the best ever listeners, and that is that he's offering a free coaching session. Go to coachwithtrevor.com. That's C-O-A-C-H-W-I-T-H-T-R-E-V-O-R.com. Highly recommend him. I've worked with him before. I'm currently working with him right now as my business, as my real estate investing coach. Highly recommend you do the same. Take him up on his offer. Get a free coaching session, coachwithtrevor.com. Best ever listeners. Hello, hello. How you doing? Welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. My name's Joe Fairless and well, happy Sunday. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. And because it's Sunday, we're doing a special segment today of the show. It's called Skill Set Sunday, where after this conversation that I'm going to have with our best ever guest, you're going to come away with a specific skill that you can then apply in your investing career. Uh, We've got a wonderful best ever guest who's been on this show before giving his best ever advice. Of course, this is a different format. How are you doing, Jordan Schwisfeld? Hi, thanks for having me, Joe. If you recognize Jordan's name, well, that's because he was on episode 199 titled, What Exactly Is an Institutional Deal? Go listen to that and hear his best ever advice. Today, we're gonna be talking about the secondary market. He's going to talk more about that. So really quickly, Jordan, for like 20 seconds, can you give the best ever listeners just high level overview of your background? Yeah, sure. So my background is as the uh, co-founder and CEO of Pure Realty, which is a uh, primary crowdfunding marketplace um, allowing investors to access institutional quality real estate transactions for their portfolio. Prior to that, I was an attorney and, and received my JD MBA from the University of Miami in Florida and uh, my BS and BA degrees from the University of Florida and have roughly 10 plus years of real estate investment and sales experience along with uh, documentation around those types of transactions while practicing as an attorney. Awesome. And I can tell the Gator Nation is near and dear to your heart based on your Skype user (laughs) ID. That's exactly right. Yeah, go chompers. I call them the chompers. (laughs) All right. So skill set Sunday. What's the one or two liner of after this conversation, what specific skill will the best ever listeners come away with? I think uh, the ability to evaluate transactions off market. So uh, that that's a unique skill set. And with the new introduction of a secondary market for crowdfunding and private REITs, you're actually being given an opportunity to evaluate transactions that are not quote unquote on market or, or being presented or pitched. It's really a true off market transaction in every sense of the word. Awesome. All right. That is very clear. And now let's get into the secondary market for crowdfunding and private REITs. What do you mean when you say secondary market for crowdfunding and REITs? One of the great opportunities for the crowdfunding space specifically was the ability to invest in direct real estate for much smaller dollar amounts. And uh, and with the new passage of the regulations that allow for non-accredited investor investing, so everybody we wanted to um, create a crowdfunding market that mirrored in a lot of respects the public markets so that you know while real estate is generally a long-term asset hold if the investor feels that there's a, a potential that he might need cash in in six or seven years 
we didn't want to make that a, a, a non-starter for a real estate deal. And so um, the uh, engineers at, at CFX Markets, at cfxinvesting.com, created a marketplace that allows for multiple portals within the crowdfunding space to list um, assets of their users who need that liquidity for any number of reasons um, and really uh, uh, reduce the transaction costs and friction costs around that uh, liquidity need. And what it does for the buyer uh, in a lot of respects is, is it allows the buyer to provide that liquidity need to the seller and in doing so will be benefiting from likely a reduced market pricing. And so uh, for those who feel you know, very confident in their ability to understand a real estate transaction, this is one opportunity where you can really benefit from that knowledge and also just from the, from, uh, the liquidity provision standpoint. So is it just for people who have equity or shares in a crowdfunding deal or is it any type of real estate transaction? Yeah, so at the moment for uh, the platform, uh, my understanding of, of CFX markets is it actually works for crowdfunding assets, private REIT assets, and a select number of real estate company assets who have agreed to kind of list on this trading platform. So Pure Realty is, is one of the crowdfunding platforms that lists its assets on the trading platform so that any Pure Realty investor can go and, and, and when and if necessary, sell those shares in the open marketplace on CFX Investing. But we're not exclusive to that. There are a number of other crowdfunding portals out there and, and real estate companies and, and the, the entire private REIT market as well. Was there ever a desire to launch a company like this under the Pure Realty umbrella yeah. So that you give your investors flexibility and kind of keep it all in house. Yeah, that's a it's a great. It was actually originally the, the the plan to do just that. So my engineering team and my partner's engineering team had developed this mechanism for um, secondary market transfers as a value proposition to our investors, and we quickly actually recognized that this wasn't a pure realty or or crowdfunding exclusive need, but but really an industry need. So we opened up the framework uh, middle of last year and allowed for other portals and other real estate companies and, and private REITs and brokers to, to plug into it and provide that open centralized marketplace for the entire real estate industry. And uh, we've then kind of split that company, allowed for CFX to be portal and asset agnostic while Pure Realty still focuses on, you know, creating commercial investment opportunities for the retail investor. Ah, uh, okay. But it, there's part ownership that Peer, Peer Realty has in CFX? Uh, the management and the, and the investors, not Peer Realty it, itself. Okay, got it. There, there's overlap in team and, exactly. and there's a dividing line between the actual walls. Correct. Of the, okay, got it. That's pretty cool. It's uh, really... Um, and the goal for, was, you know, yeah. again, we it, it was very much... The same goal, which is real estate assets that you've invested in through your portal, to mirror the type of activity that's that we're seeing in the, in, in in some of the other public markets. Um, specifically, and and as this marketplace becomes more efficient, the ability to to rebalance and reallocate a portfolio through the life cycle of the deal. Some of your investors might really really love development projects and understand you know how to how to evaluate a construction budget and, and and construction timeline but don't really want to take part in the stabilization process they can actually go and 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 assuming you know the market gets closer to efficiency which we expect in in, in the next year um, they can sell their asset after the certificate of occupancy is issued take their gains and move into another construction project and just really focus that part of their investment on the asset and stage of the cycle that they're most knowledgeable of. Um, and so, you know, the, the skills that you are required of the investor now can actually be more specialized than they ever had to be, um, which uh, is an exciting opportunity for those buyers and sellers within this space. As a buyer on this platform, what should you be evaluating in order to make sure that you're getting the right value for what you're paying? I think uh, first and foremost, you should evaluate all of the original content of the deal. So make yourself familiar as if you were going to invest in the deal from its inception. And then the CFX marketplace pulls all the data around current distributions and any updates to you know construction timeline or rentals or tenants. So just evaluate the deal from its inception until the date of the purchase. And then also recognize that 
you are providing a service to that seller and you should be compensated for it. And, you know, whatever that compensation is, um, as far as pricing should be beneficial. So a lot of it is just recognizing what stage the asset is in as well. So, uh, you know, if you're buying this and it's two and a half years old and the original investment was a pre-construction development project, your returns are probably not going to be in the 25 to 30 percent that the original buyers um, were uh, expecting because two and a half years later, the project is built. They already have tenants, but you could probably get a very nice return compared to just investing in a fully stabilized rental apartment because of the fact that you're investing in a deal at a mid-life cycle scenario. How does the pricing work whenever you find something that you, you'd you like? Unlike a lot of the primary marketplaces where you're kind of told what you're going to pay for this specific deal and you can take it or, or leave it, with the CFX marketplace, it's a marketplace pricing. So you actually go in and you evaluate the deal and you make an offer on the asset. And so if you think it's valued at $5, uh, and, and uh, then you can make that offer. And that could actually create a scenario where we get to more efficient and perfect pricing in the real estate space. Do you have to be accredited? Under the regulations, you do not. The, there are unrestricted securities that no longer require the accreditation. I would say for a, an abundance of caution in the early stages of this marketplace, the management and, and legal has decided to keep the buyers to accredited investors only. And will you define accredited? So an accredited investor right now is defined as uh, an individual who makes 200000 dollars a year for the past two years and expects that to continue as an individual or 300,000 same scenarios uh, as a married couple or has a net worth of greater than $1 million outside the value of their primary residence. So it's a fairly substantial hurdle right now with the new regulations coming into effect with regulation A plus, which is a new way to raise capital that allows for non-accredited investors to take part in these transactions. Those securities will actually trade to non-accredited investors from its inception and will actually be able to trade to non-accredited investors on the marketplace as well. So that's that's an exception. It's, it's almost like a publicly listed company in a lot of respects. But for the most part, the traditional Title II Reg D offerings will be limited to accredited investors only. What's been the biggest challenge in launching this? Developing exchange technology, um, which our team has been on for over a year, was was definitely significant. Uh, we believe has been done very well at this point. And then, really, you know, the questions that you've asked, you know, how how are you going to handle pricing, and what is the type of product, and who are the sellers, and who are the buyers, and really coming to a good answer on all of those. I think having market pricing with a combination of a bid ask and auction for these types of assets, which the system now allows, will create that efficient pricing mechanism, um, you know, having plugged into now 22 portals, including some of the top 10 in the country, along with accessing the entire private REIT market and and having um, traditional real estate companies with, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars under management plugged directly into the uh, into the marketplace has been exceptional to to create the product necessary for efficient market pricing. How does CFX make money? They take a transaction fee off of the trade. Right now, it, it's uh, in line with the private REIT market, and we're hoping to compress that as efficiencies are created. And what's that fee? 5%. 2.5% off the buy and 2.5% off the sell. Does that mean both sides are paying the equal Correct. equal percentage? Correct. Okay, I'm with you. Is there anything else that you think we should talk about as it relates to acquiring the skill of knowing how to invest on the secondary market within a platform like CFX? Yeah, I think the skill is deep understanding of real estate and its markets. So understanding cap rates on multiple assets and in multiple geographies, understanding how net operating income of an asset is created, and then doing your own analysis on, well, do you think cap rates are going to go up or down? And so really using individual knowledge, creating that ability for a specific investor who has a specific thesis on a specific market and asset to basically, you know, call it beat the market, but but use their own knowledge um, to, to price an asset and create value from that knowledge. I think that's the, the one thing that's really exciting about this is you're basically being rewarded as an active investor while taking a passive stance, which is not really possible in any asset outside of the public equity market. 
say I'm a seller on CFX. I've got a life circumstance that came up. I need to sell my interest in this crowdfunded deal. We'll call it a fix and flip. Where does the information from my deal or my, you know, my ownership pull from? Is that something I upload or is that something that the crowdfunding platform API sends to you? Exactly. So for portals that we work with, we actually have an API. So you will actually just give us permission to link your specific account. But, but we also pull all the information about all of the deals from those partner portals. But to verify ownership, you would actually go in, give us your account information for those portals. We'd verify your ownership. And then once the transaction is is affected, we would then go in with our API to the main portal and basically change the ownership table of that asset so that the seller no longer receives distribution and the buyer begins. And that helps with the verification of documents if it's pulling directly exactly. from the API versus if the distressed person who needs money is uploading their own documents. You know, that's exactly right. And that's that's how it's been done for the private read space, which is why the transaction costs and, and friction costs around that transfer are so high and why we expect this to really be a changer of the game for crowdfunding assets to another reason why crowdfunding is, is a more appropriate opportunity for your real estate allocation. Jordan, congratulations on this. This makes a lot of sense. I think there's a big need in our real estate world for this. And I think this is going to be a big thing for you all. And it's really impressive. Thank you also for you know, being on the show and talking through this skill set and uh, sharing you know your, your insight on how to buy on the secondary market. And then, as you mentioned, it's really a, a, a skill underneath that of how to really evaluate deals, knowing the markets, cap rates, NOI, doing your own analysis. And this is simply a platform that gives you the information, but clearly there's no substitute for knowing what the heck to do with that information, how to evaluate it. So thanks so much for being on the show again and talking through this. And I hope you have the best ever weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, Joe. Talk soon. Do you need more leads for your real estate business? And do you need a platform to help you get those leads? Well, Danny Johnson, previous best ever guest, episode 294, has exactly the solution for you, best ever listeners. Go to leadpropeller.com and that's going to help you, well, get more leads. He's got a website service that you can sign up for. It's a money back guarantee for the first 30 days, so no risk involved leadpropeller.com. You can also click the link in the show notes page and that will take you right there.